Whatever you say, you're the boss. faster than the clocks we have at City Hall. It's going to be quick. Thursday, July 17th, <coughs> meeting of the Capitola Planning Commission. Roll call, please. Commissioner Welch? Here. Commissioner Graves? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Ruth? Here. And Chairperson Ortiz? Here. Tonight's meeting is uh, cable cast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be replayed the following Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Charter Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed at the city's website, www.cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Victor Herman. As a reminder, would you please turn off your cell phones? And if you would like to, please sign in when you come up to speak. Thank you. And please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, then. First item on our agenda tonight are oral communications. Are there any additions, deletions, or changes to the menu? No, Madam Chair. Menu? Nope. <laughs> okay. Any um, consent calendar pulling? Commissioner Graves? Yes, uh, I would like to pull uh, the second item, I believe it is, let's see, let's make sure, yes. Item 4B, please. Okay, that will be pulled, and um, is there a, a decision about when we, I think we should hear that uh, just after the consent calendar and prior to the first two issues on the public hearing, if that's all right with everyone. I think it will be pretty brief. Yes. Okay, great. Um, this is the time for public comments. If you're here to speak on something that's not on tonight's agenda, now is the time to come up and, and talk. Anybody? Okay. Then we'll move on to staff comments. Uh, anybody? No? Did I miss somebody? If it's not on the agenda tonight, if, if it's not something that's written down, this is the time to come and speak. Okay. Good. Staff? No comments. All right. Well, you, I didn't know I was supposed to make commission comments when you asked me about the agenda. You're right, you didn't. I skipped, I okay. skipped commission uh, comments. Sorry. I have some uh, comments tonight, and uh, please, staff and the public, don't take this in the wrong uh, vein, but uh, uh, summer's upon us, and uh, we get a lot of questions, and I'm in the village daily, and uh, uh, a lot of questions are arising, arriving at my doorstep from merchants wanting to know what other merchants did. And so my first question that's been posed to me is, uh, we some months ago approved a new sign uh, plan for the village that included some uh, tripod type signs and the c council uh, juried with that a little bit and approved it and there was a permit process and a fee attached and I'd like to see a report on how many permits were issued and how many fees were issued because at that council meeting uh, they were going, they did limit the number of permits and signs but I'm hearing from everybody that has one of these nobody got a permit and nobody paid any fees so I'd like to see that A number one first of all just to, to evaluate it. The other comment that I'm hearing most often is that the village is looking pretty shabby for a lot of reasons and some of them are being fixed by uh, the uh, city at the present time. The numbers are going away on the sidewalk for the parking mm -hmm. spaces. 
But again, uh, the signs ra raise their ugly head, along with a number of merchants uh, doing outside sales every day of the, of the week. And uh, we used to have outside sales in the village a couple of times a year, but it looks, just looks like a tourist trap, and that's the word people is using are using. So, uh, you know, when we do our rezoning and the rest of it, we really ought to look at uh, doing uh, something with a sign ordinance because I may not be right, and I certainly do agree with some of the people that have talked to me about it. Uh, but the, the outdoor sales are taking up much of the sidewalk space now where plants used to be. There used to be planter boxes in front. Now it's, it's shoes, it's jewelry, you name it. There is also, and I remember this very distinctly from the council's uh, meeting on the tripod signs, there were to be no off-site signs directing you to some other part of the city. And at the corner of San Jose Avenue and Capitola Avenue, there's a bulb out when you're going north on San Jose Avenue that's got a big rock in it. It looks like a tripping hazard under the ADA, to be perfectly honest with you, and should have some plants in it. But every day now, there's a tripod sign in there directing you to a surf shop that's about a half a block up the street. And so I know that's a no-no. Um, and because uh, we'll be talking about it later, but it came came to me personally, this is not something from the public, but sure. when you asked us to look at the Verizon sign for an additional sign up there, I noticed uh, su two signs on the overhead for the business next door. One was a massage sign and then was a super yoga sign. And I wondered, because they're both banner signs, they obviously had to get permits from somebody in the city. And they seem to exceed the sign limitations, especially the massage sign is bigger than any of the letters on the building for all the other merchants that have the proper sign. But did anybody in the city really give them a temporary permit for those signs, or are, is it a matter of enforcement? So I'd like some answers, not tonight, but in the future, so we can just know where we're going, because I think signage is getting out of hand. Sure. I, I can respond to some of it tonight, if you don't mind. Um, you're right, the city council did consider the village sign ordinance. It was initially passed, I want to say about a year and a half ago, and there was a one-year review. Uh, when they reviewed it, they voted to continue to allow uh, merchants in the village to apply for sign permits. Uh, to date, we've received one permit that was withdrawn. Nobody has received a permit for a sandwich board sign in the village. So if you see them, they're unpermitted. Um, at that same meeting, we also addressed outside merchandise displays, and the council directed us to handle those on a complaint base, uh, basis. So if we get a complaint, we follow up. If we don't, they remain there. Um, in regards to the banner signs in the plaza, I, I can't tell you offhand if we issued permits, it's very possible that those are illegal banner signs as well. Okay. But Thank I you. think you're right. We do need to look at it when we get in the zoning code, the sign ordinance, and I, th I think we'll spend well, a lot of time on You know on what that. concerns me, and I thank you for your answer. Sure. My concern with the signs and on a complaint with regards to the merchandise being sold outside is that uh, people in the community, the c citizens of Capitola, are kind of reluctant to be the yeah. bad guy. Right. And it seems like we have enough employees in the city that drive these streets every day like I do, and I'm not above being the bad guy, so I'll be glad to give you a list of where I see a lot of outdoor sales and where I see signs that I think are inappropriate. And I'll be the bad guy because I don't think we should be, be pitting the citizens against the merchants that they hopefully support. So I'll be happy to do that. I just Understood. want to carry through with this. Sure. I think your last comment was well put. I think pitting, pitting the, uh, making citizens or planning commissioners or whoever be the enforcer when the, inf the enforcement should be done by staff is kind of the wrong way to go. Anybody else got any comments? Okay, then we will, sorry I forgot those, Ron. We'll move on to approval of the minutes of the June 5th meeting, which I will recuse myself from. I wasn't there. I'll move the minutes unless there's any necessary corrections. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. And on to the consent calendar. And these are items that are enacted in one vote unless someone has pulled an item. 
and we have got one per, one item that's <coughs> been pulled. So we're going to address item A, 528 Capitola Avenue right now, and then we're going to vote on that, and we will then address item B, 200 Wharf Road, and, parcel, and the parcel adjacent to 809 Bay Avenue, and we'll vote on that separately. So um, anybody have any uh, comments about A, or would you like to move the consent calendar? I'll move the consent calendar. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And we move on to item B, 200 Wharf Road and the parcel adjacent to 809 Bay Avenue. This is a coastal development permit and application and tree removal permit for the Soak Hill Pump Station Force Main Replacement project. The project runs on either side and under Soquel Creek from the property adjacent to Peary Park through Rispin property to Clare Street. It's the one that's in the Knob Hill parking lot. I'm sure many people are aware of that one. So uh, staff report please. Thank you. Um, before you is a coastal development permit for upgrades to the Soquel Creek pump station, tree removal permit, and the installation of a new sewer force main. As seen in the slide, the Soquel Creek Pump Station is located in the back of the Knob Hill Shopping Center, adjacent to the Soquel Creek. The project includes mechanical updates to the pump station to enhance operational flexibility and reliability of the system, while also addressing current odor issues. The new sewer force main will replace the existing 1977 pipe. Um, the new sewer main will extend from the Soquel Pump Station to the existing gravity flow sewer pipeline within Clare Street. The new line is approximately 1,200 linear feet, 300 of which is under the Soquel Creek. The applicant has completed a mitigated negative declaration for the project. Um, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission approve the application based on the conditions and the coastal findings. And the applicant is here tonight to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there questions for staff? No? <coughs> no questions? And we will ask, uh, uh, sir, um, this, this is uh, going to be a public hearing and you'll have a chance to speak on it. Are you here as a, as a representative for the... I, I'm here on the front from uh, the clinic up the street and you went through that so fast. W was the permit approved? It was. Yes. Thank you. You can go. You can <laughs> have the rest of the night off. <laughs> Okay, so uh, is the applicant here for the sewer line replacement? Uh, Hi. In as much as I pulled this, I'd like to make some comments, and maybe we can oh, make, it, make it shorter. Um, would you like? To, would you like her to sit down and? Meet no, her? great. <laughs> you want to make? We're, all, we're all friends. I think <laughs> she wants to uh, talk to you. <laughs> we're all friends. Uh, I I found I read the entire uh, replacement document, and I was. A little bit concerned that we did a, a mitigated EIR when it sounds like the county has not really decided what they're going to put or how big the pipe is going to be uh, because in this document there is both a 24 and a 20 inch pipe uh, put in a casing 40 feet down under the creek and and all of that and so maybe you could kind of clear that up, clear that up because it's hard to create an environmental document not knowing exactly what the project's going to be. So it was almost with me a cart before the horse. But let me carry these, this a few steps further. Um, it appears on the diagram that was just on the board and in the diagram that's in here that this uh, new force main or new main will be on the what I would call the south side of the present uh, sewer station there. Uh, and this line, according to everything is drawn, would go through Perry Park, it says, and I'm hoping that you can tell me that it's really going to go through Perry Park and not the large rock that sits directly south of the station at creek level. Uh, that hole used to be a very popular steelhead hole. It has a very derogatory term now, so I won't say it, uh, it had a name that, uh, a word that we don't use anymore, but uh, it's now called the pump house hole. And uh, to ruin that rock and 
it actually serves as a scouring for steelhead to lay and it has an undercut and I hopefully we're doing this pipe uh, farther to the south in the in the Perry Park area so I really need to know where the pipes going across because it's not quite clear in the plans uh, the size of the pipe that's going to go in there one for final item it appears that we're going to be doing horizontal boring and the horizontal boring usually requires uh, some type of slurry or something else to accompany that type of boring and if that were to fracture and come up into the stream bed I'm not sure that there's enough spelled out in the environmental mitigation to handle that and we could have a possibility of silting up the screen, stream uh, some 3,000 feet all the way down to, to uh, the lagoon here in Capitola. That would be detri detrimental to not only the things that you point out here in your report, the, the Tidewater Gobi and the and uh, steelhead and choho. Uh, it, there's a lot of other animals that are aquatic there, a lot of turtles, a lot of other things that would be affected. So uh, I'm hoping just to get some answers. I love the idea that we're uh, doing this project, but it appears we have a 27-inch pipe there now, and I assume it's going to continue to work along with this 20 or 24, or what are we really doing? <laughs> Thank you. That's kind of complicated, actually. Um, Part, part of the, well, the, the design engineer is here, so she can explain the 24 and 27 inch pipe. We designed this so that we would minimize any chance of fracking out under the creek. And I'm not sure what the depth is, but that was one of the requirements. We had a um, geotechnical engineer, we had do all the um, investigation and give us recommendations. Um, the HDD or horizontal directional drilling will will be under the big rock, but I'm not sure how far south it goes from the pump station, so I think Nancy could address that too, but it's not going to come up until we get to Clara Street. I understood that part of it. I'm more interested from the east side where the pump station is as to where the location of the 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 uh, the excavation will be for the to put in the machine that oh, does the horizontal. That would be in the in the parking lot. And would it be, I guess the easiest way to say, would it be where the path leads to Perry Park now or would it be closer to the station? My fear is if it's close to the station, that drilling is going to go, or that hole is going to go right next to the large uh, sandstone rock that deflects the river in a, a westerly direction right behind your pump station. and that would be really detrimental to the aquatic life there. It, it, it's going to start, I don't know, how many feet? Yeah, it's within the parking lot, it's, and it starts farther back than you would imagine because we it have to get it to... It was unclear on these. That's yeah, we have to get it to a specific depth so that I think it's, what, 20 feet? At 40 the, feet. 40 feet at the pump feet. station. So we have to start farther back to get 40 feet deep at the pump station. So I'm pretty sure that rock will be fine. But I'll have Nancy come up and, and describe the, the pipe. The reason that there were two different size of pipes listed is because PVC pipe and HDPE pipe, those two have different si um, sizes associated to get the proper inside diameter. And she can go into more detail on that. Yeah, neither one of them are four inches walls. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> Um, yes, Thank you, you for that, explain that? that explanation. I'm, uh, I want to hear more. Thank you. Okay, well, Nancy can help you. <laughs> so regarding the 20-inch and the 24-inch, as Rochelle mentioned, um, the way that this contract is going to be bid is we're looking to get the best price, and both materials are suitable for horizontal directional drilling. And as Rochelle mentioned, you know, we're really interested in what the inside diameter of the pipe is, and we need a certain pressure rating in order to pull the pipe through. Right. And so based on that, um, you know, HDB, HDPE requires a 24-inch pipe and fusible PVC requires a 20-inch pipe. And so that's why there are two different pipe sizes mentioned in the document. And that's purely just based on your inside diameter and your pressure rating. Okay. Okay. So basically you're telling me the mitigated uh, EIR accounted for both pipes and you choose later when you get a favorable bid on Correct. one or the other. Okay. Correct. 
I'm with you there for. Okay. Now can you tell me, or is there, or could you carefully describe how many feet, the, the tap hole that you need for drilling, they call that a tap hole, okay, okay for the horizontal drilling, uh, is going to be how many feet south of your present station, the, the south wall of your station. So um, if you look at the map over here, can I go over and point? Sure. So the, the tapping hole is really only like eight feet by eight feet yeah. by five feet. Deep. Excuse so me, we, uh, we do have a mic that we, you oh. could use. It's right Sorry. here. Somebody's got it somewhere. There it is. So the tap hole is about eight feet by eight feet square by five feet deep because with horizontal directional drilling, it's a surf surficial drilling operation. Um, and so that's all you'll see on the surface. And if this is the pump station right here, our, our tap hole is somewhere in here. <coughs> okay. It's way back beyond where um, the actual connection point to the pump station is because you're going from the surface so I'm not exactly sure where that sandstone rock is, but as far as, you know, the part of the, the tap hole that you'll see, it's back here. And then your pipe goes down under beneath the creek. I would say that the, uh, the large rock that's behind the station in the creek bed is uh, immediately adjacent to the back of the old locked restroom on the pump station there. Okay. So if that gives you any help. Right, I'm okay. familiar with all the stations. So. Okay. Right, so I mean, it's we will be under that rock okay. then. Okay. Thank you for that. I have, I have one question. How close does this parallel the existing line? My memory serves me correct. I was on the sanitation board when the yeah. original pump station was built and the line was put in. Does it come up more straight up the hill from the pump station? I want to say the existing one is somewhere, is it over here? It's north of the present pump station. Yeah. yeah I knew it was north. I'm, I thought it came up a steeper grade there. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you offhand exactly where it is. Thank, Thank you for that. Or, sure. Thank you. And then did you have another question about the slurry or anything? or? I, I'm, I'm concerned that with all boring, even though it's 40 feet deep, that you can have fracturing to the surface and that would put the slurry that they use with the boring into the creek bed. And it mentions in your uh, mitigating measures that uh, they might want to take it off with uh, suction pumps and stuff like that. I wonder if there's been any provision uh, to put some barrier in the stream during the period of time that would allow water to pass through, but would collect that slurry or silt, whatever you want to call it, before it uh, got too far downstream. And that's my concern. Okay. Um, from what the geotechnical engineer has told us, we've positioned the, the pipe so that when it's beneath the creek, it'll be 40 feet down. I know and that. it's located in the Parisma Foundation, which is considered almost a bedrock. So it's very hard stuff. There's very little potential for any, um, any material to get up into the creek bed. Um, we will be requiring the contractor to put together a frack out plan or a contingency plan such that if there is any noticeable frack out that drilling operations will stop immediately. They'll initiate um, operations that they've listed in their contingency plan. They'll clean it up. Um, they'll assess the situation, and assuming that the frack out has um, been taken care of, then they can reinitiate the, the drilling operation. Uh, so I, I'm, in my reading of it, I agree with everything you said. Uh, it's just that that plan seems to be coming after the fact, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and that bothered me a little bit, and that's the reason for my questions tonight. Um, the 40-foot, uh, excuse me, the 40-inch casing that in fact the 20 or 24 inch pipe will go through. Uh, uh, th once that's done, I'm not worried about anything, you know, right. type of thing. So uh, there would seem to be just that vulnerability, kind of like the BP in the Gulf, only during a certain period of time. So uh, just hope we don't have any problems. That's right. the main thing. Okay. I want to put you on notice that I'm watching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any other questions? No, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Uh, is that, does that conclude your presentation?
All right. So this is a public hearing. Anyone here who is uh, here to speak about this application, please step forward. Hi, right, Kate. Hello. My name is Kate Arietta, and unfortunately, I was going through the television and saw this is the first I've heard of this. Was this not noticed around uh, within 500 feet of that? It was noticed. You didn't get a little green card? I've been out of, out of the country, maybe that's why. No, I, I didn't. My mother saved all the mail. But I've still gotten it. Yeah. No, I didn't get one, so that's why I came down. I, d I don't know. Um, it's the first I've heard of it. So um, I was just wondering, it looks like they're going to be digging a big hole in the middle of the parking lot right. at Knob Hill. Right. Um, is this where someone would talk about um, the hours of the operation and how it's going to impact the neighborhood and the noise and all of that? Yes, and I think that's appropriate to talk about. Uh, is that mic not working? I got a te the text. Look at that, it's funny, it came out, but talking. it looks like it's maybe working I'm not okay. talking. He went, back, he went back in, so he's okay. Um, maybe the staff could talk about that a little bit, about the, the um, hours of operation, the noise levels, and that kind of thing. Sure, or if the applicant would like to discuss your mitigation measures. for. So construction will be working within the City of Capitola's work hour ordinance, which is between, well, our contractor will be working between 7.30 and 5 p.m., um, there will be a certain period within, um, I think it's about a five-day period where the contractor will be requesting um, a waiver or um, I guess it's a waiver or an exception, an exception to that um, work hour ordinance when they are pulling the pipe through the parking lot because that will require a 24-hour operation where they're fusing and pulling the pipe at the same time. Um, as far as noise is concerned, we understand that there is a sleep center that's in the Knob Hill parking lot. Our contractor will be coordinating with them to ensure that we understand that they have some studies that occur during the day and some that occur at night. And so we'll be coordinating with them such that when we have critical operations that are going on that they don't have any studies going on. If during that five-day period when we have to do night work and the sleep center has studies going on, our contractor will be required to put up noise mitigation measures, which might be sound barriers either around our, our, te um, our sending pit, or they can also put sound barriers up on the walls of the actual sleep center building, and that will help dampen the noise. On the other side, where uh, Claire's and Wharf Street is, you have the Capitola Library, you have your apartment buildings, you have some houses. During the daytime, because that is where we're doing open cut construction and it's a very linear type of construction, they'll only be in one position for about a two week period and the contractor will be working during um, the acceptable working hours and so that is considered a, a not very significant um, environmental impact. As far as um, during the night when they have to push the pipe through for that five day window, um, Again, the contractor can put up a fence and noise barrier curtain around the receiving pit, and those barriers can be anywhere from 8 feet to 40 feet high, and the point is to build it high enough so that you push the sound away from you know, your two-story apartment building. And I don't know if um, you have any other questions about Well, let, let me bring up something, sure. too, because I live somewhat in that area. Okay. And the creek is sort of a natural amphitheater. It carries sounds in the most extraordinary way. You can literally hear something that's two or three blocks away like it was next door. So it, it might not be surprising to, for you to find out that more people are affected by this because the sound is carrying. And, my, and we do have single family homes directly in back of Knob Hill mm -hmm. Center who are going to be affected by this too because I imagine that's going to be where most of the noise is. Um, is there any mitigation for what, what those people need, can do at night when that's happening? So we will have a noise complaint line, so residents and citizens are welcome to call it, and the contractor will address those on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, there, is, there is language in the mitigated neg deck saying that, you know, if, if it warrants it, they can provide hotel vouchers, so for that period, you know, they, they'll be put up at a hotel. Um, 
so we, we've taken those into consideration. So can you define that wording a little bit more for us? So when you say if, if it warrants it or there'll be a complaint line that, that will be monitored 24 hours mm -hmm. a day during that period of time, what happens when somebody calls? Is it is the work stopped immediately or does somebody come out? How long does that take? Those are kind of things that I think the citizens around that area need to know up front so that we, you know, we're all comfortable about that. As far as the way it's worded in the mitigated neg deck, I believe that you know the contractor will have a representative who is responsible for responding to the the complaint line. Um, I don't believe that work will be stopped immediately. Um, I think um, the call will be evaluated. Um, there will be some discussion. I think it's it's partially something that the contractor needs to set up and as a design engineer we can put language in our contract document saying that this is how it needs to be done you know if if they do receive a complaint then you know either work needs to be stopped or the contractor has 24 or 48 hours to respond to the complaint and I think that's that's probably how it would be addressed I have a I'm Noise concerns me, but it didn't when I was reading this because uh, I knew your hours of operation. And it's nice to hear about the five-day window. And I know that they put another line under the creek in the same, principally the same location, and we didn't have a lot of complaints. But I'm I'm concerned when you say there's a call line. I don't know if any of you in the audience have ever tried to call Santa Cruz County Sanitation District. Because you're not listed in the phone book under that, you're listed under the county of Santa Cruz. And you try and find it, it's almost near to impossible. So I wonder as part of your bid package, there could be some uh, very visible signs that say noise, call this number, and you get that person that you just talked about. Mm -hmm. Because communication is the key to a successful project, right. and I think we really need that. Right. I think it's not unfair to ask that um, there is a, a, a person who would answer that phone within a certain amount of time who would uh, come, come out with it, you know, and spell out the certain amount of time that the phone is answered, the amount of time that that person takes to get out on site, so that the person who's calling isn't waiting all night for somebody to come out or, you know, they lose a night's sleep because it's just exactly how these things are, uh, government and everything is run these days where everything takes so long. This needs to be a very uh, minute by minute kind of thing and I think we need to spell that out um, so that that's, it's part of this approval that we give them and also that there is a mitigation that we're sure we know what it is so the person can either be housed uh, in, in other facilities like a hotel somewhere or um, they know when this is going to end and that's suitable for them or whatever. But um, I'm, I'm hearing the, the language you guys are using tonight is a little bit too vague for me. Commissioner Ortiz, I could clarify portions of the mitigation that are okay. proposed. Okay. Um, it states within their noise mitigation that the district shall offer hotel vouchers to residents who are subject to noise levels from HDD installation that exceeds the performance standard of 50 dBA at the exterior of the residence during normal sleep hours considered to be 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. So that's during that one week period when this is occurring. So for me that feels we comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would add as part of their request for a exception to the noise ordinance which is allowed for public works projects, we can add conditions. Uh, one that immediately comes to mind is sending out some type of notice to the neighbors that identifies uh, the phone number and who to call and, and we can work through some of the details with the county to try to, you know, soften some of those disruptions that people might experience during construction. Right. And, and also language in this that makes sure that there's somebody actually at that number, there's not right. a message machine, it's always answered 100% of the time during those hours and that somebody comes out within a reasonable period of time and I think we need to spell out what that reasonable period of time is. You know, I have one question also. You, you mentioned the receiving pit which would be on the, the south side of Wharf Road somewhere in that area. I'm just curious, since that's going to be a five-day, 24-hour-a-day operation, where that receiving pit's located and what the impact will be on Wharf Road traffic. So, 
So the receiving pit is actually almost right at the intersection of Wharf and Claire's. It's actually on Claire's. And there are apartments here, there's a library here, and there's another apartment building here. So there will be a part of Claire Street which will need to be closed off, but it'll be, I guess, east of that driveway so that access to all these parking lots, driveways will not be impaired. Um, but just this little corner right here will need to be closed off because you're going to have um, large equipment that will be stationed there to help pull the pipe through. And that would be for the full duration of the five days? Uh, that's what we're anticipating. It could be less, but, you know, five max. Okay. And Wharf Road? No it's unaffected. Okay. Yeah. And so that's where the majority of the noise will be generated? For that five days, yes. For that five days. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there, co are there public comments to those? Yes. Um, it's a piece of cake for me to go to a hotel for five days. My mother's 91 years old. It's not easy for her to, to go stay in a hotel. She doesn't have anything that she's used to. She, 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 she's confused about everything different. I don't quite understand why we need to wait until we call and say, oh, by the way, this is noisy. Why isn't something, you got 40-foot 40, 40, 40 things or whatever you can put to keep the noise down. Why don't you do that before? Also, it would be nice to get a letter uh, of when this is going to happen oh, yeah, specifically. I I but, I mean, you know, not just the phone number. It would be nice if somebody would give, give me somebody's cell phone number who will be also annoyed at being woken up at a certain time because I'm calling because of the noise, because it doesn't affect them. She, uh, she was talking about some sleep, you know, the sleep place, but totally forgetting all about Riverview, Riverview Terrace neighbors. Yeah, I think we were ta talking about And if, it if there's a way we can put this noise thing up before, I, before we have to call, it, it just makes sense. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, well, that makes sense, especially when you're in such an impacted area. I think that might be another good thing to add to the, um, the request for this project. Any staff comments on, on anything? Any other? Con no? I, I agree. I think it seemed reasonable, and I think we can work out something to, again, try to alleviate those impacts to the extent possible. I, you know, I think the reality is there, there will be some noise. It's just that type of project. I don't know that it can be completely avoided, but we'll try to mitigate it uh, with the county as much as we can. <coughs> okay. And also there is a, another mitigation that um, the neighbors will be contacted at 72 hours in advance of the construction noise. Um, so that will be the time when they're, they're contacted about the noise and they'll also yeah. be contacted. And they'll be provided um, with the anticipated schedule, hours of operation, and designated project contact person. Okay. Can we request then that that contact person be available. There, there's no message machine. They are literally available yep. where they pick up that phone mm -hmm. and um, add that we they would put up the shields right at the beginning of the project. And um, what was the other thing we were talking about? I think that's all. The phone number and that. I think you know we'll we'll hope that that does it, and um, I, I think it will. Question, would it be appropriate, because I didn't see in the conditions where um, you're actually going to see a noise mitigation plan, so see if the 40-foot things are going to be put in place. Would it be appropriate to have that provided to the city in advance so staff can review it? Yeah, yeah the, the noise mitigation plan is part of their CEQA document, so we, we do have access to that. And then as we issue the exception for the noise um, the noise ordinance will look at that again and place appropriate conditions on it. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm going to close the public hearing. It sounds like everyone has had their chance to speak. If that's not true, please <coughs> let me know. I'll close the public hearing and commissioners, any comments or, or a motion? I move the approval of the project with the staff understanding the comments that have come forth tonight and uh, assure us and the community that we will do this in the best manner possible. Is there a second? No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much.
The next item on the agenda is, are the public hearings. Uh, the first public hearing is 1440 41st Avenue. It's an amendment to a master sign program at the Four Star Center to allow an additional Verizon sign on the building located at 1440 41st Avenue in the Community Commercial Zoning District. Staff report, please. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, before you is an application, like you said, for an amendment to the Four Star Center's master sign program. Uh, this map shows the location of the Four Star Center, uh, highlighted in red. The star symbol inside the center represents the location of the Verizon unit in the center itself. Uh, as you can see, the center is located just north of the Jade Street and 41st Avenue intersection. Um, and the center is zoned CC, Community Commercial, which is uh, similar zoning to all of the other um, properties adjacent to 41st Avenue. Verizon was previously located in the one unit shown here, but has recently expanded their store into the adjacent Little Caesars restaurant, which is west of the previously located Verizon store. So here's uh, Verizon's expansion. This is a shot of what the building and the building signage currently looks like. Verizon removed their previous signage above their door and has replaced it with a 10 square foot wall sign on the uh, diagonal side of the building right there. A master sign program establishes the allowed materials, letter style, height, color, and illumination of signs for multi-tenant buildings. Um, as I said, there is previously, or there is an existing MSP for the four-star center. Um, that current MSP requires that each tenant be identified through a single sign. Uh, the applicant Verizon is attempting to amend the four-star center MSP to allow for a tenant to erect an additional wall sign if the tenant expands their business into one of the corner units adjacent to 41st Avenue. And uh, this amendment requires planning commission approval. So Verizon submitted a sign application to the planning department on May 20th of this year, which included a proposal for one additional 10 square foot sign to be uh, flush mounted on the western wall. And you can see these proposals here. Staff had concerns with the original proposal due to the uh, placement of the second sign directly adjacent to the existing wall sign. This layout, which can, be see, which can be seen in the simulation on the bottom right, would clutter the front facade of the building facing 41st Avenue. Due to this, staff could not support this proposal. The applicant has since modified the proposal to separate the two signs. The updated plans propose that one sign be located on the south side of the building facing the parking lot, and the other remain on the diagonal side facing 41st Avenue. The new sign will contain the Verizon name and logo matching the existing sign. The lettering will be front lit LED channel letters that are 8.4 inches in height. Uh, the Verizon logo itself is proposed to be 15 inches in height, which is the maximum allowable height for sign elements in the Four Star Center. So to clarify the allowed placement of the signs within the master sign program, staff suggests adding the following underlying wording to the amended portion of the MSP to say, tenants on end cap spaces facing 41st Avenue who expand their premises into contiguous adjacent units may be permitted at landlord's sole discretion to have an additional sign on the 41st Avenue side. The sign along 41st Avenue must be oriented on the diagonal elevation facing 41st Avenue. The second sign must be located in the original location above the door to the second suite. Such signs shall meet the requirements and specifications set forth herein. So that underlined portion is just to ensure separation between the two. There are two units in the four star center that um, could be potentially affected by this amendment. Um, these two units are shown with the stars on top of them. Zoning Ordinance 17.57.070 Part B Section 1 explains the regulations for signs in non-residential districts. According to the section, each business shall be permitted only one wall sign except that, and then A, Businesses which are located adjacent to two streets on a corner shall be permitted one additional wall sign to face the second adjacent street if the business is not identified on a monument sign. 
Uh, the monument sign for the Four Star Center doesn't um, identify any of their tenants. It just says Four Star Center. So um, Verizon applies for that aspect of it. And um, although the, pro the project is not located at an intersection of two streets, it's located on a corner. So with 41st running and then um, the inside of the parking lot itself uh, serving as the other corner. So that being said, when you're inside the parking lot itself, you cannot see their existing sign. You can, it's only visible from 41st, so they're trying to get one. So it's visible from inside the center and from 41st as well. And then part B of that code, additional wall signs may be allowed under a master sign program. So due to that, uh, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve Project 1475 to amend the Four Star Center's Master Sign Program based on the following conditions and of findings for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for staff? So is it true that um, we are now considering a parking lot to be a second street, a corner? We've never done that before. I mean, never. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't saying that it is a second street. Um, just trying to apply the code to this situation. Okay, thank you. All right, then, uh, no questions for staff. Is the applicant here? I'll open the public hearing, and if you, do you have any comments, sir? Would you like to get up and speak, or? Just if you have questions. All right, so we'll open it to anybody else and, uh, and ourselves, and then I'll ask you to come up if you have, if you can clarify anything for us. Thank you. Um, I'll keep the public hearing part open. Let's just come back to the council and are there any comments? Account the uh, planning commissioner, are there any comments about this? Well, I'm probably the one that has the most problem with this uh, because I warned everybody when they expanded it into the second unit, the next thing they'd be asking was for another sign. And when they had the unit that was within the parking area and could the store in front could be seen, they had a appropriate Verizon sign that identified the store. Uh, that sign is now gone if you go out there. And uh, I think this is one of the few that I would really say works. Uh, I think staff did a marvelous job of getting rid of the wall sign and putting it on the parapet roof or on the roof sign. And I, I think this is appropriate. You're absolutely right. When you're in the center itself, you cannot identify what that old unit really is. You had to know that it was there. So I'm not having as much problem as I had before when they, I almost called it an incomplete application at that time because there was no sign mm -hmm. attached to it. That's my comments. Okay. I'm uh, in favor of approving it tonight. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? I'm not in favor of approving this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and that is because I'm a little confused about why we're allowing somebody to have two signs that are visible from one direction and one si and no no signs visible from the other. I could understand if this was a sign that helped them with cars traveling south and cars traveling south could actually see it, but they're not going to be able to see it when they're traveling south. So what we have here is a request for an applicant to put up two signs for people traveling north and we're not really allowing anybody else in this community to have that. That being one, the second objection I've got is that I worry that this is setting a precedent for other master sign programs on 41st Avenue. Why wouldn't we let all of the applicants that come in that fit under this end cap, I'm not sure how many, I haven't done any research, but I'm sure there's others. Why wouldn't we allow them to have the same thing? Those two reasons, I think this is, this is not a real solid request. I can understand why they ask for it. If it were me, I'd ask for it too. But I really don't think we should grant it to them. I'm worried about other people coming in. I'm worried about the proliferation of signs on 41st Avenue that are repetitive signs that don't do anybody any good. Why do they need two signs with everybody traveling one way? I, could, I don't buy that people who are already in the parking lot don't know where Verizon is. I don't buy that. Um, I also, I really want to reiterate that I don't think uh, we should ever consider a parking lot being the um, the second street on a corner lot. I, you know, unless we change our ordinance, that is not the intention of the ordinance. Um, that's it. Those are my comments. 
I will close the public hearing. I'm fig figuring that there's no comments out there. And um, commissioners, if anybody would uh, like to entertain a motion. I didn't move approval of this, but I'd like to ask staff a question. Uh, in the master sign permit for uh, uh, both Burgundy Plaza and Star Center up there, um, does it in that permit or that plan, if you want to call it that, does it spell out that you go to the city's sign ordinance for size of letters and everything else? Because the way that the uh, amendment to the master sign permit was presented tonight was an excellent presentation, by the way, but it almost led you to believe when you hit, when you saw the words in the sole <laughs> uh, owner of the property, I want to make sure that the sole owner of the property can't allow something that doesn't fit in with the height and letter size guidelines, the illumination and everything of our sign ordinance. Is that are we protected in that way? Uh, Commissioner Graves, that same phrase kind of caught my attention. Uh, you're right. If if they want to um, change any signs, a new tenant comes in or whatever, they they have to conform with a master sign program, which isn't which is consistent with the zoning ordinance. Okay. So okay, they, which is consistent with right. the zoning okay. ordinance. Okay. So Thank you. Okay. So my motion does yeah. stand. Yeah. I'll second your motion, Ron. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Um, a pup, sorry. Do you want a roll call? <laughs> <laughs> your your. Well, I don't know whether you, there's... You can uh, say it afterwards. I will say it afterwards. And, and opposed, I oppose. So the motion carries with uh, four ayes and uh, Commissioner uh, Chair Ortiz, no. And Smith, no. Oh, Smith, no, sorry. Yeah. That's all right. I was there. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Whispered, no. All right, great. So uh, motion carries. Um, thank you very much for your you. attendance. Uh-huh. All right, then. Let's see. Where are we? Are we... Back to, to the Shell gas station. Back to the Shell gas station. <laughs> <laughs> At 1649 41st Avenue, this is item B on the public hearing. Uh, this is a sign permit for a new monument sign with LED lettering at the Shell gas station located uh, on the corner of 41st Avenue and Capitola Road in the commercial, uh, community commercial district. Staff report, please. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, the current application is for a sign permit application at the Shell gas station located at 1649 41st Avenue in the Community Commercial Zoning District. Shell is proposing to replace the existing monument sign that is located on the corner of 41st Avenue and Capitola Road. The applicant is proposing digital LED lights for the lettering within the new sign. Um, Pursuant to the code, staff may administratively approve changes to existing signs when it um, impacts the sign facing or lettering um, and when the new sign is substantially the same size and design as the existing sign. Um, Shell is also proposing changes to the canopies for the lettering for Shell. They're going to change back. They're going to change to their logo. It will fit within the existing Shell lettering area and it fits within this exception. The modification to the monument sign does not fit within this exception or allowance. Um, the image on the slide is the existing shell monument sign. As you can see, the description for the fuel, the regular plus V power and diesel, are permanent with individual internal, illumin with internal illumination, off-white lettering within a gray opaque background. The pricing is updated manually with changeable copy numbers. The changeable copy signs are switched out by employees to reflect the current pricing of gasoline and diesel. The image on the right is the proposed Shell Monument sign. In this sign, the description for the fuel remains fixed with individual internal illumination and red lettering with a white background. The pricing is updated automatically through digital LED lights. The sign code specifies that internally, internal illumination for monument signs is limited to the use of individually lighted letters with opaque or wood background materials. The applicant is requesting that the Planning Commission consider the application of digital LED lettering to meet the intent of the required individual lighted letters, although not on an opaque or wood background material as required. And as you can see, that's a bit outdated in our code with the opaque and wood background because as you drive up 41st, that is not the current situation. Um, the digital LED lights will have the appearance of individually illuminated illumination while creating an easier means to manage pricing automatically. 
Allowing the LED lights will create digi a digital aesthetic along 41st Avenue. Um, as outlined in the staff report, staff does have concerns for the proposal. The first being that uh, digital LED lighting is not allowed within our code currently. Um, also, in the coming year, we'll be doing a new, we'll be rewriting the zoning code, including the sign code. And staff is recommending that digital LED lights be considered holistically during the um, sign code update in the coming year. Allowing an exception for one side sign could set a precedence premature of the new sign code. Um, other concerns is that the use of digital LED signs in the future may be appropriate along 41st Avenue, but not within all other areas of Capitola, such as the neighborhood commercial zone or also within the central village. And although LED signs may be appropriate for gas station monument signs, um, this may not be appropriate for your typical shopping center monument signs that are exist all along 41st and throughout the other zones as mentioned. Um, if the Planning Commission were to consider the approval of the digital LED sign, staff would suggest adopting findings to prevent digital LED lettering in all monument signs for the future by making findings that LED lettering is appropriate only for pricing within gas station monument signs within the Community Commercial Zoning District and also specifying that L digital LED signs are not appropriate within the central village or neighborhood commercial zones. Staff would also suggest a condition that, um, that the LED lighter lettering not be movable or animated. Um, staff drafted findings and conditions of approval if the Planning Commission were to support the request by the applicant. Um, but again, the staff recommendation on this is denial of the application and to consider this during our sign code revisions um, due to the sign, the proposed sign being in violation with the current code. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for staff? When will we be adopting a new sign ordinance? <laughs> the, we're starting the zoning code update currently, so possibly in the next year with the... <laughs> Update of the zoning code. <laughs> <laughs> but don't hold your breath. <laughs> but don't hold your breath. Yeah. yeah. As you mentioned, it, it appears our, our ordinance is a little behind the right. technological advances yeah. that have taken place. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for staff before I open the public hearing? I do. Uh, uh -huh. I understood, and yeah, the, there's page numbers, um, that the proposed view on page 70, and this has nothing to do with the LED lighting on the monument sign. This has to do with the canopy sign. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned in the staff report the proposal was for the, I want to call it the logo, the shell yes. would be the same size as the lettering, but yet in this view, the proposed view, it is larger than the lettering. It is smaller than the lettering. It we, is? When you um, box put a box around the shell, it's actually when we calculated um, the square footage that the shell lettering fit within and the pectin, the shell logo. Um, the logo is actually smaller than the actual lettering for shell on the canopy. Well, I see this lettering, I excuse me, the shell logo, I see it going from the top of the canopy, canopy to the bottom of the canopy. And when I was out there, the lettering that exists today does not go from the top to the bottom. The letters, the okay. actual spelling out show. You're correct, yes. So uh, what are you yeah. telling me? You said just I, I, me I meant the, the square footage. If you were to put a box around the shell lettering and calculate the square footage, it is larger That's, than the square footage. That wasn't footage. my question. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. That's why I was sorry. confusing. Yeah. Um, okay. I've asked enough questions. I, I, I'm right in my vision. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Other questions? <coughs> okay, I'll open the public hearing. Is there a representative from Shell here? Would, do you have anything to say or would you? Okay, come on forward. Hello again. Hi. <laughs> um, 
There were a couple of questions specifically. Yes, we actually. I'm sorry, could you state your name again? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm Hillary. I'm Hi, with Hillary. Peninsula okay. Petroleum. And yes, the, the Shell, what has happened is Shell has required all of their franchisees to update their standards to their RVI image, which is called, well, it's, it's their revolutionary vision image. <laughs> so um, a retail visual image, and the E stands for evolution. So they're taking everything from what they, they uh, have had for many years. Actually, they, they put all of this through in 2009. And since they didn't have enough takers, they kind of mandated, you have to do it per their standards or they're going to penalize us. So we have gone through all of the agencies in all of Monterey and Santa Cruz County for all of our sites to upgrade the standards. And what that includes is exchanging out uh, that awful shell channel letter logo on the canopies, which existing is internally illuminated, and it's a neon fluorescent light, which they always burn out. They, the actual red itself fades and looks really awful. So they have taken the approach of refining everything to a very simplified shell pectin. Um, and to answer the question about the shell pectin, they originally came out with a 48 inch, and that's including the white around it. The white is completely opaque. The only thing illuminated is the pectin itself. And um, we said it can't happen. We cannot go above the canopy level on these. It needs to follow the same protocol in almost every situation that we have encountered with every agency. So they did come up with the exception of the 33 and a half inch pectin which fits inside the canopy range and again the white is not illuminated at all it's just the yellow of the pectin with the little red border around it so um, it will actually decrease the square footage the existing square footage of the shell channel letters is 11 and a half and the shell pectin including the white is 7.79 square feet so it's actually reducing and as you know most businesses never want to reduce <laughs> their signage that they have approved but in the situation, it's, it's going to be beneficial for everyone, I believe. Um, as far as the LED itself, um, Shell has given us a deadline to have all of this completed by the end of December of this year. So we're really in a push to get it done. And I understand that uh, most of the agencies that we have encountered are in the process of rewriting their codes to accommodate the greener, more efficient LED light. There are multiple reasons that we want to do this, uh, even though Shell's requiring it. We do have other options, but we have to have the denial from the agency to take back to Shell or they still penalize us. We have to prove that we weren't able to do it. If it is approved to do the LED, um, there are a couple of factors that are very important. Um, in addition to just reducing the carbon footprint in general, we are not changing the actual sign size, dimension, foundation, any of that. It's a retrofit. There are actually cans that just replace the existing cans. So we don't have to, you know, go that route on anything. It's literally, they, they fabricate everything to fit. We have a sign company that's contracted with us. They come in. We're going to have uh, one of the sign companies out of Santa Cruz working on these projects for us. And um, so it's, it's a like for like with the exception of, in this situation, the actual LED digits. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest perks for mm -hmm. us as an employer from a risk retention you know, risk prevention uh, uh, perspective. The employees don't have to go out on the parking lot in the rain, in the evening, whatever it may be, to manually change these plastic letters. It's all wireless. They change it from inside the station, which is tremendous. Um, everything on the sign itself is opaque. I did pr uh, provide Katie with some slides. Um, there's one in particular. It shows the night illumination for every one of them. So if you look up in the left corner, that's almost an exact replica of what our monument sign would look like at night. See the black one in the corner? That's what it would look like lit up. That's all you would see. We aren't going to have the red V power on there. We're not proposing that. If Katie, you could go to the next slide. This would be the option to the right. See the white boxes internally illuminated as it is now, which ultimately, you know, you'd have the red on there and that, that would be the option that we would have if we cannot get the LED to the left approved. And the next slide, please, Katie. That's just a, a look at the numbers and what they would look like if it was the LED versus kind of the ditto of what it is now where they're internally illuminated. That's more what the, what the red and white would replace that existing. The food mart, if you look in the upper left corner, that's what would be visible, the blue in the evening. And the FRN is this one on the left. So that would be a little more white with the blue. And there are other options. If the FRN wasn't accepted, we also have like... Um, 
uh, a car wash one we could put in which would be exactly like the food mark where just the blue is eliminated. So we have options on the panels that we put in. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. And then um, I, this, this is uh, just basically a reference to the shell channel letters that are currently up there that are 11 and a half square feet. These are the neon illuminated fluorescent lights that are coming off. These are the existing logos on the canopies. And the next one, this is, this is the one to replace. So again, all that's illuminated, even with the white background, is the pectin itself, and it will be well within the fascia height. And the next one, Katie. So again, these are, um, these are the proposed and the existing. So the existing is, is in the upper left corner, and then this is the proposed. Um, the other part of this proposal was that uh, we currently do not have the red LED band bars around the canopies, um, just typically on the two street sides where the, the traffic can see them. Shell is requiring that we do that as their level one. If we are not allowed to do that, then we have just a flat, just the same flat fascia. They're just refreshing the colors, a little more white, a little less red and yellow. Um, Katie, if you can do the next one, please. This is, the this is the second photo of the proposed level one. That red bar is illuminated LED. Um, a lot of our other stations have fluorescent bars up currently that we're bringing down. They're heavy. They're, they're not efficient at all. They're going away. Shell is asking that we request this from the agencies if it doesn't exist. We do not have the red bars around either of these canopies right now. So this was part of the original request. Um, if this is denied, then the next slide, this is the layout, by the way, just so you can see where the bars would be. The red bars would be where you see the yellow. So there would be three, um, the IHOP side in the back, the left side there is 41st, and then Capitola is the front side, and that'd be on both canopies on that side. And then on the right side uh, over there is your coming down Capitola. Okay, so that, that would be level one. That is what Shell is requiring we request. And the pectin canopies logos, those aren't negotiable. They're not available and they're not illuminated, they're telling us. So those, again, are like for like because the ones that are up there now are already illuminated. So the, the pectins are illuminated regardless. But if you'll, the second option, is this level two? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is literally no red bar around the canopy base. It's just like it is now with the flat fascia and the vinyl striping with the, the pectin logos. So the next one, Katie, please. And that's what it looks like flat. You can see there's no ridge. There's none of the, it's the, the, the level one, the canopy fascia, the yellow, it's, it's like a three-dimensional, it's a light plastic, kind of like a plasticky aluminum material that comes off of it a little bit to kind of give it that three-dimensional look. So when the red bars are lit at night, they kind of reflect off the yellow. It's actually a nice halo effect. It is a soft glow, but I do understand that um, you're very limited on what you will allow with the LED. So that is something, again, I would have to have in denial format to take back to Shell if that isn't something that you would approve um, on the level one. So this is the level two. This is the minimum requirement. And uh, this is our, our second option. <laughs> so um, the next slide, if Katie, um, shows, it shows that there's no red bar on there. It's just flat ECM and the two pectins, one on each canopy. And then the next one, Katie, the one to the left, that shows what it looks like, one looks like at night illuminated. And again, the only thing that we would be touching, we're not doing anything with the LEDs that are under, on the underside of the canopy. Those are existing. We're not moving those, touching those. It's just the canopy band around that's being proposed. Um, and of course, the replacement of the pectin. And the pectin that you're seeing in the lighted one is the large 48. The pectin that you're seeing in the right one is what it would look like on um, the Capitola site. Any questions for the app applicant? I have a question. I I'm, I'm, I'm wasn't even aware that you were included. <laughs> I am com well. You've managed, which is not hard, to completely confuse me. Uh, I wasn't aware that we were d addressing anything in this application except the monument sign and the change of the. Well, I'm not even sure the change of the actual shell lettering for the. Correct. The um, the change of the shell from the lettering to the logo because it fits within the square footage right. um, staff was not that could have been an over-the-counter permit okay. for approval. And what about the lighting? So the lighting within our sign code it states that architectural illumination is not regulated within the sign code. If you had concerns for the lighting band around the canopy, the red 
um, illumination, that <coughs> band, that is something we could discuss tonight. But it, within the sign code, it states that um, architectural illumination is not. So you were going to. So I was under the impression that that, that was not part of. They were allowed to do it without you even approving. Correct. Okay. Yeah. But. Uh, okay. Wasn't that part of when we did when we redid Burger King? They that was part of their application when they talked about their logo and their signage and what kind of illumination it had. And I would imagine that's part of that's not just illumination of a, a building, but it's permit. part of a, a, a logo. And the mm -hmm. theater. And the, the theater, theater. Yeah. yeah. So we can talk about that. I just kind of wanted to clarify that that yep. th that lighting was not actually addressed in the staff report. I think yeah. that's why we're kind of getting a little confused because oh. we didn't hear anything about that until tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shell, like I said, Shell came and um, when I discussed with Katie Pryor, I said, okay, here's, here's our option. Th this is what they are requesting we do. They're saying this is what you need to do. And they have become aware, especially in California, that there are a lot of, you know, districts that say, no, we're not going to let you do, let's say you want to do three bands of, of light, you can do one. You know, and Shell has, has, of course, their criteria. So we've had to find compromises. So that's why we, they recognize now that, okay, there are going to be limitations with some of the illuminations, some of, you know, the signs that come above the canopy lines aren't going to be allowed, some of the LEDs aren't going to be allowed, so we, we have the secondary options. This is what they are requesting. So anything in, in the first option, the level one, that we cannot do, I need to have something in writing to take back to Shell. And then the second option is, pretty much a like for like. The biggest thing is, is the LED price sign would be huge. And if we aren't able to do that, you saw the other options, which are basically the same. We're changing the colors instead of the yellow uh, with the gray or the yellow with the black. I think you're, you're moving a little bit fast for yeah. us because we have so not seen anything on this. And so uh, I think oh, if I you go back, okay, do you want to go back to one of the proposed well, I'm not and sure existing? I even want to address this tonight. I, I, I guess we need to hear it. So, um, what I gather is that the level one, what you're calling level one, mm -hmm. because personally I can't read a lot, of, I don't have the right glasses, I can't read a lot of that up there. Level one is the full tilt boogie. It's yep. everything Shell wants. All the lights, yes. Level two are exchanging the current lighting It's a LED. Light. Level mm. two would not have a band that lights up Correct. at all. It would be canopy, exactly right. as it is. Okay. Today. Yeah. So um, level two, if you were to drive by the Capitola site today, yeah, and look at the level two, it would look like that. But we'd have the, the pectin on the canopy instead of the shell channel letters. Right. That would be the only difference. All right. Good. Does that help. And the monument sign, right? Yes. Does the monument sign fits under level two, right? The one that was proposed tonight is their level one because it's LED. Right. Okay. Right. So if we want to, can you back up for me, Katie, to the monument sign where we had the the letters or the numbers, the digits? Right here. Okay, so yep, go one more. Th this is the difference. What you see on the right, the white with the red, is the equivalent of what we have there now. Only now it's yellow with black. Right. The one on the l so so the level two with the flat ACM. If you don't approve the L the ACM, I'm sorry, the, I'm sorry, the the canopy, you know, with no lights on it. Okay. The level two. Are you not now talking about this, the, the sign? Would go with the level two. The mo you were asking about the levels. So the level two with the basic ACM with no lights around it on the canopy and the white, the plastic lettering uh -huh. that's internally illuminated, uh -huh. like the one existing, that's level two. Okay. But so I guess the question is, I think, I'm, I think you're confusing me now. Could we have a combination yes. of, so you don't have to pick one or two. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I just want no. to make sure. No, they want <laughs> one across the board. And if you're saying, no, we won't allow this, this, or this, there are the level two options, which they will. I just have to have the denials of what they won't allow on the level one so that we're not penalized for not doing what so they're requiring. So this is what level two is going to look like if we don't allow level one monument. The white and the red, yeah. Just changing the colors on the existing. And, oh, I got it. Okay. Well, as I understand what Katie said, we could approve or deny the, the level one can or a monument sign, but we have no control over what takes place on the canopy. So um, the level two design could all be approved administratively. The level one design 
requires approval by the planning commission. Well, let, let me ask the you. LED. Well, let me finish a little bit, Ron, please. Okay. And yeah, and I you just lost and I want because I well no. I, heard, um, I thought I heard you say that there's nothing in the ordinance that allows us to control lighting. Yes, and um, so within the sign ordinance, it talks about internally um, architectural illumination is not regulated through the sign ordinance. Um, I do need to apologize, given it more thought about a design permit and modifications to the exterior. That could be, you could apply the change of the facade regulations as we did with the theater and within Burger King, those were design permits. So. Um, where this came in as a sign permit and we were reviewing, I, I looked at the internal illumination that... Through the sign? Yeah, ordinance. through the eyes of a sign permit, but truly you do have the regulatory authority to, because it's an e a change of materials to the exterior of the canopy, through a design permit application, you could state that the LED is not... Why? Mick, I was trying to clarify what you were saying, because the staff report says, and it's kind of interesting, architectural illumination. Why would that ever be a part of a sign permit? The architecture is the structure and the building and the rest mm -hmm. of it, and you'd have a separate illumination section in your sign permit. So it's kind of like, we know we approved Burger King, we know we approved the theater, uh, and then we're being told, here shells uh the little stepchild, we have no control over this red band on the canopy, and I, and I, I disagree with staff. I'm I sorry. apologize for that okay. because I, I okay. do recognize the mistake I made there. I, right, I have one question for yeah, staff. Yeah. It, if I'm not mistaken, does Chevron not have the lighted band around their canopy already? Didn't you say across that you do? Chevron. You, you do not currently No, have Chevron across the street, not Shell. Oh, yeah, Chevron. Chevron yeah. across the street with the... Canopy isn't there's already illuminated? I think it may be. It's not LED illuminated. No, it's mm. not LED, but after their last That's remodel, the I difference. think they did get illumination. It's opaque. Okay. Yeah. That's good for me. Thanks. All right, great. Any other questions for Hillary? Did I thoroughly confuse everyone or was I able to clarify <laughs> some of the difference? We're getting it. We're starting. I just want to clarify one point. Currently, on the existing sign, <coughs> There is illumination behind the yellow pricing. Yes, with it the is internally person. illuminated. Is yeah. it? In, it is an internally illuminated monument, and the, it's the same. If you drive by at night, you'll see that just the shell pectin on that big white square is all that illuminates of the shell. Okay. Pectin and it's it? a fluorescent. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, but stay close. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, cl I'll close the public hearing unless there's someone here tonight to talk about it, which doesn't look like there is and uh, ask the commissioners for their comments and uh, a motion if there is one. I'll jump in if it's okay. Go ahead. Um, I really appreciate the job that staff did in bringing this up and, and because when I was first reading it, I'm thinking green and I'm thinking, you know, save you, saving on um, labor costs versus, you know, being able to change pricing and all of that. But when you step back and you think about the digital impact on the character of the whole area, it, it does need some, some significant thought. Um, but I think gas stations are going to be moving that direction. So I don't have a real problem with looking at the monument sign and the digital piece of it and very carefully you know, putting together some conditions and some findings that would keep it from proliferating throughout the village. But I respect the staff's position that we really need to do this carefully so that we don't wind up having monument signs that now have LEDs and time and temperature, you time know, square. coming out. Exactly. <laughs> right. We don't want to be Times Square. We don't want to introduce that level of digital character, I think, to even if 41st is our commercial zone, we want to maintain that character. Those are my comments. I, I uh, would also agree. I don't have a problem with the, the plan as proposed in what Shell calls their level one, but um, I think specific to gas stations who have some type of requirement to post their uh, um, the amount of the fuel out there, I think this uh, LED is a much cleaner look than what is currently there. And I think going to uh, their option, if we don't approve LED, 
uh, is not as aesthetically pleasing. I think talking with staff that, uh, and apparently you already have put together some type of wording for this just in case we approve it. Um, specific to gas stations with the non-moving, non-animated LED light um, for this commercial uh, area, I think uh, I'm in favor of. I think we could, I could move forward with it and then catch up with it when we get to the sign orders because I think it's just a matter of time. And in regards to the banding above, I, you know, I think because I guess it's already uh, something that the staff can approve over the counter. Right? Our other fuel stations already have that banding, the lit and part, the lit part of around the uh, canopy. I guess so. For me, I could approve the, the whole project. I'd like to clarify one thing that um, tonight we recognize that staff could not approve the lighting around the canopy without okay. your approval. Okay. Okay. And that would require a design permit, which we couldn't approved tonight anyway because it wasn't noticed that way, right? Architectural treatment. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to sounds. make a couple comments. I don't wholly disagree with anything anybody said, but I want to tell you what I could approve tonight. I think that the new monument sign with the LED and the, the pricing and being able to change the prices all works for me. What really doesn't work for me is the illuminated band that high up in the air. You eliminate that, and I'll vote for the project. That's why I asked her if you could split the two things, and you don't have design one, design two, design three. So the, and direction, that's what the direction would be then to, to agree with you would be to approve the sign and keep the canopy at level two, correct? Right. Okay. And the, to take into account what uh, my protege here to the right said, that we use staff's comments with regards to LED writing on other commercial establishments in the area. In other words, all the safeguards that you want. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'd make that as a form of motion because that's the only way I could approve it. I'll second that. I have a comment about... Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut off. You, you didn't cut anybody oh, off. Okay. Um, I'll wait for staff because I'm a little... I'm a little confused about it. I'm not exactly sure we can deny something that's never been, that's actually never come to this body uh, that's been p posted in, a, in an agenda. I don't think we can vote at all on that illumination. I think the best way to go on the illumination, let, let, let them go ahead with an over-the-counter sign change because we know you can do that. But if they want to come back to us with that illumination, I think we should address that in a, in a separate application, go ahead and approve the monument sign if that's what we want to do today and ask them if they want to come back and address that illumination at another time as a design element, then we'll let staff, we, that would let, allow staff to have the time to look and see what we've done with other applications, to see what other gas stations are doing on 41st Avenue, because we may be, by not allowing them to do that, denying them what we have allowed other businesses to do on 41st Avenue. So I would encourage us to change that motion just a little bit and tweak it by saying we, uh, we will go with um, uh, one uh, level one for the monument sign and, and that's all we will do for tonight because we don't need to do anything with the canopy. You guys will handle the shell over the counter and we will address the illumination at another time. The reason that I'm not interested in changing my motion and I'll speak directly to yours I believe that the, uh, the band of red on the canopy is an architectural feature, not a sign feature. And for that reason, it doesn't really need to be on the agenda tonight. It's been being brought to us part of their sign package. I think that was a mistake, to be honest with you. Uh, I, the reason I don't want to change my motion, though, is if we don't get the rid of the band and the, the staff approves it over the counter, I would have never voted for the monument sign. Right, but the staff's already said they're not going to approve That's it over the counter. That's not an over-the-counter It's not an over-the-counter thing. Well, They've you talked to about being over-the-counter. That's what no, I heard you say. the shell part of it being over-the-counter. They, they're saying that changing shell gas mm -hmm. or whatever it is, shell, the lettering. The clamshell to the lettering to the clamshell. They can I understand. change that over-the-counter. Right, right. We're, we should not address that anything having to do with the building at all. We should only be addressing the monument. It's the only thing that was agendized. If we, if we, and, they, and we have staff's word that they're not going to allow them to, to uh, do the, the lighting on the canopy, I think if you want to come back and, and do the lighting on the canopy at another time, we'll address that then. 
Okay, well, so I can solve the issue real quickly. I'll withdraw my second because I think you make a very good point. Okay. I'll withdraw the motion then because it isn't going to go anywhere. All right, so I'll, I'll read, I'll do a motion here. Uh, uh, I move that we approve uh, the level one monument sign with the um, wording that the staff used to restrict this type of LED lighting uh, with the language that the staff used. Uh, and maybe we could go back to that and just double check. Other stations, okay. 41st at re restricting it to 41st to the commercial, community, community commercial, commercial and no. restricting it to gas stations. No, no animation. And no. I would also like to, well, I think this does it in our sign ordinance anyway, but restrict the, the the height, so that we can't, we don't get real high, large, you know, size and height too. That's, I'm a little worried that we're not covering that as well. It's the same size and height as the existing. Right. Weights and measures okay. dictates how large every single digit has to be. It cannot be one millimeter less than six inches in height for every price digit. So. So, so it sounds like, and and, and then as far as the height of the actual sign itself. Do we need to address that? It Is somebody likely to come back to us to ask for a higher sign? Uh, what are, what's the height of what's the maximum height of a sign on 41st Avenue? I think eight feet eight is the feet. maximum height of a sign, and it but depends on, on the width feet. of a building. So how large a building is. So maybe we should say the, this is restricted to ground monument signs, ground level monument signs. But then somebody builds a mound and puts it on top <laughs> of it. Uh, well, at least we're going somewhere with it. Why don't we just you know, you're trying to get my vote and everybody else's vote. Why don't we just approve the monument sign? Because you're concerned about the legality of not posting the red band, the architectural feature on tonight's agenda, and say, you know, we've heard from staff that they're going to allow the clamshell versus taking off the shell letters on the canopy, uh, so we don't need a motion towards that. Uh, and if they applicant really wants to come back with a red band on the canopy, it'll require a reapplication. I have a motion on the floor to that effect, and I'm waiting for a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> May I make one I comment? Wait, 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 wait. We haven't finished with our... Uh, I said I. You did. I oh, okay. Did. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking You're at trying to get I a no? I'll vote no. Time. <laughs> no, I think, the, I think the applicant has something that she really, she really, really wants to say. I really and need... Yeah, the, the, the whole part... We're okay with you denying the red band. I just have to have something stating it was denied at the hearing. You cannot deny something that was not... Um, um, because I do have to. There, there is a section of, of the, the code when it talks about design permits that the community development director does have the authority to make a determination that a change is substantially compliant with the existing condition. Um, I don't know if we would have made that decision, but certainly we could have and issued it over the counter. It doesn't strike me as a, a real significant change. It might have been something that we would have brought to your attention. Um, is there um, so in that regard, I guess what I'm saying is if the majority of the commission felt that it was an insignificant change, we could issue that over the counter and be done with the business tonight. However, if you do want to hear it, uh, it you're absolutely me, right. We'd have to. It re sounds to me it. as though uh, there are there's not there's probably a majority that feels it is a significant change, but would like to hear it. Are you under a time constraint? I am. <laughs> and here's the thing: we, the way that this works, we are actually releasing packages as we're getting permit approvals. I literally have 38 sites in several counties. So you would rather be denied than hold it up and go to Exactly, because we have to have all of these installed before the end of December to not be penalized. Okay. Well, so we can't deny you, but staff could deny you, and we can recommend to staff to deny you. I, I could make a motion that we direct staff to deny the, the, the illuminated red band on the canopy if it comes before okay. that. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. Wow, there <laughs> <is>. <laughs> uh -huh. You don't need a motion. Clear. I don't need okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So it's just a, it's simply a formality for us. I mean, you know, the, the biggest thing for us, the LED is obviously going to make everybody's life easier on, on our end and really clean up the appearance overall, like you said, very fresh. Well, too bad we can't hear it on another meeting because I, I have a feeling that it, we might go with it. So okay. sorry. Sorry there's no... No time to do that. That's okay. That's okay. Right, so, so thank you. I just wanted to make sure that you understood the time constraints I had with the ordering processes and all of that and the installation. So it's easier, it's better for me if you say no, don't even worry about it. We're not, we, we really don't want the red band. 
and I get it in writing, we're good with the level two okay. on the campus. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That it works for you. That we're we're for sorry you're the only the sign person <laughs> because then I'd ask you, when are you, when are you ever going to start on the propane tank? <laughs> you know what? Actually, it's starting next week. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hillary, just out of curiosity, if you failed to meet the deadline and we did agendize this for the August meeting, what would happen? For this? Yeah, what would Shell do? They just don't give us our funds. We don't get paid. They withhold money. They withhold funds. There's an initiative for us to upgrade to their sound and say, you need to do this, and you're getting the initiative, you need to do it. If you don't do it, you're not getting the initiative, and we're on your back. You've got to do at least some of these changes. At a minimum, you have to do this. If you don't do the very bare minimum... She suffers, not Shell. And you didn't even apply. Yeah, yeah Shell doesn't okay. suffer. It's, they, they make us pay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> to answer your question, it's the franchisees. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. So to clarify, that was a unanimous vote. Yes. We didn't quite get done with that. But. <laughs> okay. Great. That's what I have. Thanks. <laughs> Good. Good. All right. I'm going to make sure I, I look at everybody's so faces while I vote from now on. <laughs> um, all right. So we've got staff understands where we are going with that, the rest of that, and we'll go to the director's report. That closes public hearing portion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just very briefly, a couple months ago, we discussed the zoning ordinance, presented a work plan to the Planning Commission. Uh, we are moving forward. We are finalizing some interview and survey questions uh, with the intent of starting that process here in the next month. Um, when we did present to the Commission, uh, several commissioners expressed an interest to participate as panelists uh, with the interview. So we will be contacting each of you probably within the next couple of weeks to make those final arrangements. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Are there any commissioner comments? Just one quick qu question for staff. The uh, the house up on uh, the top of the hill at Capitola Road that's been under construction now for uh, 16 years, I <coughs> believe, uh, it was given a time frame to complete the, the construction. Do we have any status update? I don't think that time frame is complete yet, um, although I, I will say that it it's a bit of a tricky situation. If there's a public nuisance, we can take enforcement actions to abate it. Whether or not that house presents a public nuisance is debatable, um, but certainly we're trying to put pressure on them and to get that thing wrapped up and some of the plants taken off the front yard and the roof done. Okay. I just have one comment and that's a reminder to um, staff that I will not be at the August Planning Commission meeting. It is my intention to be back for the September meeting, um, but if anything changes I will call and let you know. I have a question about Capitola as a whole. I live on the creek, and for the last few nights, I have heard a very distinct noise. And I'm wondering if anybody else along my area has heard this noise. It's it's a it's almost like a foghorn, but it's a short. Uh, and you, usually, I think there's four. We've counted them. We can't figure out where it's coming from. It's an uh uh mm. uh uh, and then it's off for about five minutes, and then it does it again. It does it all night. Really. Hmm. Nobody's n nobody knows anything about it. Okay, well, keep your ears perked because I want to know what that is. I thought I had heard it one night, but it sounded like a like a boat. I, I don't know what it is, but it's very rhythmic. It's it it happens at um, at uh, equal intervals. <laughs> it's weird. They're too bad they're gone, but there used to be an alarm on the sewer main that goes under the creek that serves. Shadowbrook, and there is a um, manhole uh, right where Riverview Avenue turns to go up Oak there. You go down between the McLe uh, Mc McLean house and the other house there, Defoto, and uh, there may still be that alarm. Well, that old sewer line that came from Shadowbrook under the creek oh, there. Yeah, it you know, may have an alarm on it. Joe yeah. said he thought he heard it during the day, too, so it might just be during the day, but there's so much ambient noise during the uh. day you don't hear it. Well, uh, still, the alarm would go off day and night at, with right, the operation. Right, yeah. right. Okay, thank you. Uh, that sounds like it's that's it. So, good meeting, and we will adjourn to the meeting of August 7th. Thank you, staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners.